recording. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to one of the greatest weeks of our lives. If you are a Sheffield Eagles fan, uh, I can't say better than that. Can you put anything better than that, mate? No, no, it's one of the best. It's one of the best weeks we've had in terms of everything. I mean, there's been big games, there's been Wembley, there's been stuff, grand finals, but this is a different kind of brilliant, pal, a different kind of amazing. I've I've never been, I mean, I've been to some events and I've been there, but there's never been a better atmosphere. I've never seen a better atmosphere than that ever at a Sheffield Eagles game in my life. And I've been to some crackers. The atmosphere, the stadium, the friendliness, the warmth, everything from the moment I turned up there and it started to rain to the moment I went home. Well, if I can remember, and then running up the road with you, 53 years old, nearly collapsing, trying to create, rush for a tram that was coming in a couple of minutes. The whole night was just mesmerizing. Uh, it just, I can't, I can't speak highly enough of the club. I can't, every single person involved, that you guys, the supporters, everybody that was there, what a night. It's, it's blue. And I even watched it last night. I'm going to keep that recording forever on my Sky Q box now. Yeah. I will. I've, um, I, I, I didn't record it. I did see it last night, but the, the, uh, the highlights um, are on YouTube, which is fine for me. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, the flag, our little flag, well, your flag, you got it, was, uh, was uh, featured quite heavily. Everybody you can see, you know, the <laughs> background, you know, uh, Blazing Squad at the back got the faces on quite a lot yeah. as well. Um, oh. you asked me before we went on when did it sink in the reality of it I think yeah. it was when I saw it on YouTube I saw the highlights and I saw the Eagles playing on that pitch in front of all us watching from that stand and uh, that's when it started to feel quite real mm. um, yeah it's not <clears throat> we know there's a few edges to finish on the stadium and whatnot, and we've got the capacity issues for the minute but mm. we've got to celebrate this for what it was mate we've yeah. got to celebrate it for the uh, for the thing that yeah. we've been doing. I mean, how many weeks and weeks and weeks have we been saying, hang on, a little bit longer, we're almost yeah. there. We're there, we made it, we're here, we're home. Yeah. I think the funniest thing is we've got to give a special mention. I've come up with a new nickname for everybody that goes on the hill. You've heard okay. of the TV, they heard of the TV show Hill Street Blues. I'm calling it now Hills, of course I have. Hills Hill Street Red and Golds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the whole thing's going to kick on. I mean, the club even said, you know, come and watch if you can. Yeah. Um, so obviously, when we got the capacity problem sorted, you'll be able to come in and it will be fine. But <laughs> um, but um, I'll, I'll probably. Uh, I mean, I sat in the stand with you and the others because I wanted to on Friday, but on Monday, sorry. But more than likely, I'll probably go and stand on the hill on the far side myself because that's the thing we like to do. So um, yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun. At least you can. And it answers the question: you can stand around the pitch anywhere you like. Just not in front of the stand, obviously, because it's what yeah. wants to see. But anywhere else is all fair game. Yeah, yeah. It was am amazing for eight hundred people. It was yeah. amazing for eight hundred people there. Uh, we've got to give a special mention. I've got to give a special mention to Kath Owen who said, yeah, this is for you. And I'm like, what? Wow. Um, the amount of people that talked to us, the amount of people that said they love this show, the amount of people that came up and just said, you do an amazing job. Love the interview with such and such. Love the interview with Baba Bada. Everybody that came up and saw me, they just said, they're not one person hated it. It just said, we love everything about the show. Everything. Oh, we're joined by Martin. Martin who? Oh, Martin. Martin. Which Martin's Martin. this? Yeah, Martin. Well, I just said everybody could come on and go on with their memories. I've got, I've got a feeling this might be a good one tonight. Yeah. Martin's connecting with his audio. I mean, everybody's just clicked in and stuff, so it's coming on. But uh, it's, it is. It's gonna, this is going to be a grand. Coffee. Snacks. Coffee crisps. Yeah. Snacks. Hello. <laughs> you are live on Eagles Chat. Good evening. Blue ribbon and orange clubs. Are we ordering the takeaway or what? Are we ordering? Are we ordering food on here? Yeah, I'll have a margarita, fourteen inch, please. If we're, if we're <laughs> Martin, are you? Uh, Martin, we're gonna have to disconnect you, mate. Martin. 
Yeah, I'll have to remove him. Sorry. I think somebody's clicked the link by accident when trying to comment or something. But uh, yeah. thanks for talking by Martin, whichever. Cheers, Martin mate. Thank you. <laughs> we now know what you're having for you. We now know what you're having for the takeaway. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think <laughs> that's just completely thrown me. Um, I think Monday night, I mean, I got down there about well, evening, Andrew. Uh, we got down there about four o'clock, I mean, and all of a sudden Tash threw giving me giving me things so I could get in with the uh, with the mascot and then just saw the merchandise there and everything. I had a nice little walk around and uh Evening, Alistair, and we just walked around the whole place. Yeah, and uh, I went and in. The, good, I, so went, I went in the dressing room. I went in the Eagles dressing room. Whoa! Is it, is it good? Is it all nice? Two rooms. One side had all the shirts up and the kit, and the other room they had a circle of chairs all the way around. And then they had the planning. They had the board in the middle with the game plan and things like that. And I just went. I had a chat with Jed, and uh, he's still coming on. And I chat with all the other folks. And then I went, this ain't my place. This is for coaching staff, management, and players. This ain't for me. I'm out. And I just walked out. And Richard Pepper went, what are you doing? I went, there's all these places in the world that I'd love to go to, but that's not for me. And he went, why? And I went, that's the Eagles. Not me. That's Eagles. And he went, even after all these years, Dean, you still show bleeding. You say, you're a silly old bugger, aren't you? And I went, yes, but I show respect to them lads that wear that badge. I says, and that means to me, so I'm going to do that. And then Tash was telling me all night, right, this is how long it is before you get ready. Remember to put this on. Da, 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 da. I was on my way to get the flag, and then all I could see was Errol. No, we didn't see anything, Martin. We didn't see anything. We just heard you doing a... Sorry about that. We didn't see anything, mate. We just saw heard you ordering a pizza or something like that or food. But don't, don't worry about it. Just let us know if you're coming on. Uh, and next thing we know is um, I was trying to get the flag so I could go out with a flag and everything, but Errol was coming the other way. And then all of a sudden, right, well, it's got to be done now. And then when that's when we did the uh, official passing of the torch, as they say, as the mascot, <laughs> which everybody was shocked when it was Errol. Who voted Errol? I think that's great. And I am going to call Zach that every time I see him now. Oi, you know? oi, oi, oi. You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to tell people who it is. Number oh, one rule of mascot, they're not supposed he's, to know inside. Because well, he's, he's, blown, blown. Well, he's blown it himself on Facebook, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it, it shatters the illusion for the little kids. Uh, you're a wrestling fan, aren't you? Yeah. I'm just going to leave that there. Right, so, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, when I first heard it, I thought, oh, okay. But then actually, it completely works, doesn't it? It's great. I love it. The best of it is, I, will, I came out as Freddy, and I'm walking up and down, and this one little kid, let me kid, and he's going, chicken! And he's giving me that all night. Chicken! Chicken! And I went, yeah, whatever. And then he was just laughing his head off, and everybody was laughing around him, because I was taking it in good stead, and I went, ah, whatever, whatever, whatever. But for that hour... It was amazing just to be just to beat Freddy again. It was great. I loved every single minute of it. Um, I don't know if anybody. I don't. I don't. I haven't heard if there was any teething troubles with anything. Everybody got collared with Denise with a golden gamble and all that. She collared everybody with that. I mean, if you're I gonna wear, sure I, I made sure I had a pound in my back pocket ready because there were no way I would get. You can't go to Denise with a fiver and ask for change. She'll just give you five tickets. You know, it's not right. So. Um, <laughs> So I'm ready for that. I did nip in the club shop to see if they got a nudie my size, but they haven't. I didn't bring enough cash for a shirt, so I, I need to do that next home game. Unless they, I don't think you can take. Oh. I don't think pay card in there at the minute, but we'll. Um, oh, I don't know what to do. Is I don't know. I know. We'll, we'll, we'll sort that out. Teething yeah. troubles. I, I don't know. I spoke to Mr. Annigan after the game in the pub, and I said, "Did everything go all right?" And he went, "Yeah, just about. It's gone okay, as good as we could hope." I mean, yeah. I'm sure there were a couple of things that's um, you scoreboard, know, that's gone on. but but how? What scoreboard? Oh, board. Well, yeah, I have to admit, I lost count. I had to get the old phone out and check. But, um, <laughs> but it's the first time we've had any kind of event there. So, of course, there's going to be things that we think, yeah, let's do that differently next time. But that's not a criticism. That's just part of learning, isn't it? You know? I think I want, I, I mean, me and Zach was involved in the uh, meeting with all the stewards and everything like that and all the security at the start. And me and Errol. Said, oh, yeah, yeah, me and Errol, sorry. Yeah, yeah, me and Errol. And next thing we know is everything like that. The main, oh, Andrew Morris, the main crisis was at the bar running out of sausage rolls at half time. 
Oh dear. Well, well now they don't have anything they need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we were at this meeting and all these people, and the woman said to this bloke on the gate, she went, right, you've got the clicker. When it gets to 780, you've got to ring me because I've got to come and shut the gate. And he went, hey, okay. 20 minutes later, I walked around the corner, same guys on the gate. And he went, how many is it I've got to do? How many is it? 406. And I went, it's 780. He goes, how do you know that? I said, because I was stood next to you. <laughs> and he's going, oh, yeah, it was 780, weren't he? Yeah, it was 780. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but um, the pies were great because you get a nice big choice of different pies. You had chicken balti, vegan, uh, steak and onion, which I had. And then the beers were great. The free one was amazing because I thought it was the free. I thought the free, eh? Of course it was. It was free. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a cup of tea or a coffee because I said to them, is the free drink of tea or coffee? And they went, no, it's everything. I went, beer. Oh, my I... God. Boom. As <clears throat> soon as I got out of the mascot, it was like, boom, the beer. And then me and Errol recreated Wembley because when he had a pint of beer in his hand and he was offering it to the mascot, I couldn't accept it because the staff at Wembley told me off and everything. So we <clears throat> recreated it, but it was roles reversed. And I went, <laughs> I went, come on, Errol. Come on. Come on. And he's like, and I went, no, you're in mascot uniform. And he's like, but uh, oh, the whole place, if that place was rocking with 800 people, what's it going to be like with 1,200, 15, 16? I know I'm going crazy, but yeah. surely that was the perfect bounce to see people at Sheffield going, oh, hold on a minute. This looks this looks great. Well, we want to be part of that. Uh, kids before it, we've got to give a mention to all the teams that was there. The women, oh, the, yeah. the women, the wheelchairs, the uh, L, the, learning, the LD team. Well, the LD team, team were there as well. Yeah, I, w I went in early to watch Leighton play. That was uh, that was great to see him on the pitch. He absolutely loved it. Came up with a massive smile. Oh, um, yeah. and I got really, I got roped into doing the uh, the flag pull out at the start because the um, the learning disability team were doing the Eagles flag pull out uh, just before you know before the teams came out. But they didn't have enough people, so they wanted you know parents, adults, whoever. And um, he just Leighton just said to me, "Did I want to come and do it?" And I'm like, oh, "Yeah, of course I do." So I was actually at the back um, as they were as they were pulling it out. So there were about 15 people around there doing that. And then as we're pulling them off, we're like, "Do we fold it up nice and neat, or just chuck it in a bowl for someone else?" We're like, "Well, the team's running out, and they're about to kick off, so just throw it in a bowl and let somebody else deal with it." You know, somebody else will line it. I assume they belong to Premier Sports and they wheel them out whenever they've got a, a game on telly. So. Um, yeah, we did. That That was all That was all good. It was um, all just nicely organised. Nothing seemed to be... If from the outside, anyway, I might be wrong, but yeah. from the outside, nothing seemed to be a stress. Mm. There didn't seem to be people running around like headless fools. You know, it all seemed to be quite in a stride and, yeah. and well nicely done. And everyone at this club deserves all the credit in the world for making sure it went as well as it did. And everybody for turning up on time, you know, being patient with your tickets, um, because obviously they were keep, they're only there's only like a gate open at the minute. That will change. I know I know there's a turnstile which we're not using yet, but we'll, yeah. we will get to that. But we you know well done everybody for uh, for the way it went off. I think it's been a great advertisement for this club, and it shows you as you're just saying the atmosphere was wonderful. What did you think of the pyrotechnic fire? Oh, I love the barbecues. I love them. I think there was a rumour that Premier Sports was telling the Eagles to stop, stop to score and tries because they were using that much gas. It was going to cause a cost of crisis living thing for Premier well, Sports and it was going to blow their budget. But uh, we had, we had, we had a, it was a nice to see the photograph with the uh, ex-Eagles lads with Ollie and all the, when, with the two Fazers brothers and the yeah, ex-Eagles lads for witness. That was cool. I enjoyed that. Uh their number eight of witness deserves a death wish for trying to pick on facts. And I, when you watched it by, you could see what happened. That dummy by facts when he threw it three times one, and then two. he floated what one, two, three and floated it. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, Alistair says, honestly, I think five quid for the pint of John Smith is a little expensive. Just so Eagles get all the money for it would be nice for extra things like burgers and chips, hopefully in time. Alistair, come and live down south, mate. I can take you right now to my pub across the street from here in Cambridgeshire, and I will buy a pint, and I will. it will cost me about five, six quid. So, to me, it was normal. So, 
Don't complain, because I know Danny, it's like a, he'll have to do a mortgage to go out for the night out, Danny. It's crazy, well, but it's the way it, it is. It's, it's the way it is. I mean, it was extra time doing it, and what a great job they did. Well done, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, staff were great. You know, you, you, when you have these events, especially at new stadiums, you can often end up with, no offence intended here, but you can often end up with staff who are not fully trained in the job they're doing. Everybody who did that, everybody was brilliant. Well done, everyone. Right. And, um, yeah, and as regards five pound a pint, no, it's not ideal, but it's Cronenberg. You know, it's not Carlsberg or Carlin or some garbage, you know, not some rubbish. It's a nice pint. It, a fiver is fiver, yeah. but that is just how it is now, you know. Yeah. And yeah. speaking of what you were saying, Dino, the last time I was down in London, uh, a few months ago, when I took Lado to Natural History, um, uh, I snuck in, it wasn't unsupervised in the hotel room, by the way, but I, um, I snuck in the Houston Flyer for a quick uh, shandy on the way back to the station, uh, from the station, and um, I had a pint of London Pride, not London Pride, it's some London-based lager anyway, yeah. maybe Camden or something. So I thought, well, local beer, this will not be expensive, no imports are all. It was £6.50, <laughs> so uh, it was £6.50. Well, no, I just think it were. But, um, yeah, a five for a pint is not terrible in the great scheme of the world of beer. Yeah. I know it's not great. I know it's going up and up, but everything is. But as we've said, the club are getting a good cut. So it's all for a good cause. Yeah. It's, not like, it's not like the water we used to have at Don Valley and the club got, no, this is actually better, and the club gets some. So let's support them. Yeah. Michael White says, eight quid for the purple shirt and a mug. I'll certainly not grumble at that. Eight Ooh. quid for the shirt and a, and a mug. Oh, but I've already got I've already got too many purple shirts. You never have too many purple shirts. I've got two. Two I've ended up with. So I've got last two. I think I've got three because I've got one with that says Dino 42 on it. And then I've got the two of this year's players. I've got yeah. two of the players. I'll not say which ones because <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, Remember which ones? You've mentioned it a few times. Yeah, just a bit. Um I'm gonna transfer my room. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn my room into an Eagles room definitely at one point because there's too much uh, wrong colours on this good thing. Everybody thinks I'm support Castleford for God's sake. Um, I think Monday night we get to the game. It was Wembley all over again, weren't it? It was like okay, they're twelve nil up. Here we go. And then I just went. It did the same at Wembley. They just steamrolled us for the first five ten minutes, and then click. Ben Jones Bishop, Jason Bass, Chris Wellen. Fax was pulling the strings. Isaac was doing his cracking best as usual. The forwards were doing their best and everything. And, uh, oh, amazing, amazing performance. But I think, do you think Fax will get you? Do you think Fax will get you uh, by the end of the season? The please don't go chance. <laughs> No, I think he's I think he's winding down. I asked him actually, and he's yeah. he's definitely done. Um, yeah, you're right. First 10 minutes, we made a couple of errors. We get away a penalty, we had that knock on. They punished us for it, they were fresh, you know, they just got over. Maybe we had a bit of I would say nerves, but maybe there was a bit of an occasion issue there. But I knew for a fact as soon as we clicked, I knew we'd be off. Once we got into that lead at half time, I didn't see us ever falling behind again. And um, you know, the the what we've done is we've learned patience. We didn't force it. We just played the game at 12 nil down as we would have played it and we gradually reeled them in. And um, it, it wasn't, I don't think it was a terribly dirty game. There were penalties given away. There were mistakes, but I don't think it was overly bad. But um, but the ability got us there. Yeah, facts, obviously brilliant. Uh, I think Jason Bass had his best game in an Eagle shirt so far. Isaac was excellent. Um, he continues to improve all the time and he needs to learn as much as he can off Thax while Thax while we've still got Thax. Um, I can't I can't pick on anyone, you know, and I wouldn't pick on anyone anyway. I'm not that kind, but um, yeah, I thought it was a, a good standard performance. Yes, it was a bit, you know, last ten minutes were, but the game was won, job were done. Um, we could afford ourselves that, and uh, yeah, on we move. Tough game coming up against York. They're going to be really good. We know how good they are. They're third in the league, and they um, they're off on the heels of the top two. Won't get them, but they're off on the reels. Yeah. It'll be a different game. It's going to be Thursday afternoon, isn't it? It's, it's Jubilee Thursday at three o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, that next yeah. own game. Yeah, I'm just yeah, looking at that. Right. And then we've got Newcastle away, which is definitely winnable. And then after that, I'm not sure. I'll have to check calendar. Right, hold but, on a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, um, no complaints about the performance. Thought we played very well, handled the occasion, and everybody seemed to come off the pitch with a smile on their faces. You know. Yeah. There's no games this week. 
Oh, it's, it's cup, cup, it's cup, cup final, isn't it? Well, oh, scholars, oh, scholars usually play it Friday night, but I don't think they are this time. Yeah, they are. They're playing Oldham. Oh, they, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a little um, tradition. Brisbane. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know if this is not allowed or whatever, but why can't other teams use the Sunday after the Challenge Cup final the Saturday to catch up postponed games? I don't because know. We've got one that we need to catch up on, which looks like being a bit yeah. weak in orders, which frankly no one wants. Why can't we use that Sunday as a catch up? Because yeah. um, we're you know we've got the game against Batley. Who's the thing that's just me is whose who's idea was it to have two games in four days? We've got Thursday and then we've got Sunday. How comes that? What's all that about? Uh, I don't know because I thought we were just playing Thursday. No, uh, Gar hold on. We've got a few questions here. The uh, Michael White, we're going to come up with this in a minute, Michael. So don't worry, we will be answering talking about this in a bit. Alistair Wilson says the seats do have plenty of leg room and a comfy. Yep, I'll vouch for that. Yeah, big yeah, light, yeah. Say, I mean, it's not as big a problem for me because I'm no, vertic I'm vertically well, not as tall as some, so I've never found it a problem, but yeah, very generous leg room. I mean, comfy enough, you know, can't complain yeah. about that, can yeah. we? You know. And uh, in answer to Gary, are the Eagles putting a coach on for the Challenge Cup final? The answer to that is we can't get a coach for the away game, so I definitely don't think we're going to get one for the Cup final. And if we no. did, it would have been advertised now. We're three days before the final. So the answer to that, Gary, is a definite no. I know it, some Eagles fans do go down for it each year, and that's brilliant, yeah. but there's not, enough to, there's not enough demand for that, no. No, nah, no, nah, I think... I've, I've never I've never the only time I've ever seen coaches from Sheffield Eagles go to Challenge Cup final is 1998. Oh, and, oh, 2000, and 2019 yeah. when we were there. Yeah. I went a couple of times when Dave Butler was at the club and he was running them. 2005, York, you know, 2005 Leeds only in Cardiff, I went. And 2006, St. Ellen's against them uh, at Twickenham. I went to them two on a club coach. So we have done it before when we had more demand. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think well, yeah, Jay, yeah, the uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to talk about that as well. What happened this week with the RFL? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, what a palaver that was! Oh dear. Um, yeah. Um, I think yeah, we're playing two games in four days. We're playing on the second of June, which is the Thursday, and then we're playing on the Sunday, Newcastle. So we've got York at home, which is the next game, and yeah. then and then 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 recovery wise, Friday, Saturday. And then you're playing Sunday. And is, this a new, is this a new thing, that? Because I remember a good few years back, we'd play Good Friday and Bank Holiday Monday. Yeah. Over Easter. Uh, then they dropped it to just one game. But now it's it's a bit different again. I mean... I think it's just... I know it's what Fax uh, is, 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 is saying. Yeah. The, uh, the game's faster. The people are stronger. The collisions mm -hmm. are harder and everything. Hmm. But, they, they, but they just cut down for the thing. They just cut down for the bloody time. Right? And yeah, Andrew Morris just said it's just for Jubilee weekend. Yeah, okay. Um, but I think, I think you're asking, you're asking semi-professional players, part-time players, right? They've got jobs, so you've got they're gonna get they've got to work Thursday, and come down to Sheffield when they can. Then they've got recovery, which is Friday, which for most of them will involve a working day. If it's bank holiday, Jubilee weekend, most, some people work anyway. You've yeah. got Saturday, that'll be a day off. And then they're playing against Sunday. So recovery next week, the week after that. The only good thing is that's two of the four games that were without Joel and Matt, Mikey without. Super it's a bank Joel. holiday. Tasha's um, just, good evening, Tasha. It's a bank holiday Thursday. She just says bank holiday Thursday as well. Good yeah, evening, Tasha. Yeah. Thank you, my love. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, what you did for me. I will never forget it. And look, just for you. Oh, God, he's getting undressed. Where's me at, though? Well, you should have took it off first. Ha, ha, ha. My Freddy jersey. My Freddy jersey. I got my Freddy my match worn at Wembley. The, the Wembley match worn Eagles shirt. Yes. Wembley match worn Sheffield Eagles jersey at Wembley. 
Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't believe it. this is one hell of a stretch jersey. I mean, uh, I mean, you should have. I right. This is a funny story. Tash offered me the whole outfit. Offered me everything to do with Freddie. She says, "If you want to take it, it's yours. Take the whole lot." Can you? Right. I'm going to say this slow. I'm going to say this right. I had to get on two trains coming home. And then explain to my wife that I've got <laughs> an egg that looks like an eagle, that's supposed to look like an eagle, and his whole outfit in this room. Yeah, I can't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't have fixed it down. I did, I used to take the eagle, eagle man outfit around with me before when I lived in Sheffield, but that's when I lived in Sheffield. But I couldn't do it this time. I really, really couldn't. I could not turn up at Travel Lodge with a full eagle man outfit when I was going to go to bed that night. That would be a <laughs> walk through the door just as Freddy. <laughs> On a Monday night, you could just see people going, what the heck? Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. Now, that would have been funny coming on the tram back with you. That would have been hilarious, that one. Not for me. <laughs> Can you imagine the conductor? What the hell? <laughs> but no, it would it was a great day. I loved it. I'm I'm very, very pleased that I've gone to keep this. I'm 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 buzzing the fact that I've got this one now. I'm really am. Um, um, but Tash, thank you very much for everything you did on the Monday. You did an amazing job with Errol. Um, fancy naming him after the hot chop uh, hot chocolate singer. Mm. Yeah, Errol Flynn. Errol Flynn. Um, Errol Brown. Errol Brown. Where did, Errol Flynn. Where did I get that from? Um, Errol Brown. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I think it should come out to "I Believe in Miracles." <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, Probably but uh, but uh, honest, I think the PA system guy, we've got to give a big, massive thank you, a ma- massive utmost for the gentleman that said all the things about Ian Annis and all the people that were no longer here before it. The piece in the program was fantastic. Uh, lots of people that have passed away that are no longer here, and we had the minutes niners. Uh, we need to teach you how to catch a ball. What do you mean, me? I had that ball. Whoa, what do you mean, me? I couldn't. I couldn't see nothing from that outfit. It's gone. Thank God for that. Uh, but uh, the Eagles promised what they'd do it. Mark said they'd do it, and then they did it, and it was fantastic. The fact that we paid us all respects to the people that have lost that no longer here through different things over the last couple of years, and that really meant a lot to a lot of fans and a lot of people that connected with the club. Uh, it was nice to see Liam. Weren't it? I mean, Liam was there. Liam Claflay, he was there in a nice way. Liam was sat near us. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't speak to. I didn't get a chance to speak to him because uh, he was busy. But um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, he. He summed it up best on his uh, on his post when he said it was great. He he feels a great sense of pride for his part he played in getting that done, and now we can enjoy it as a fan. And uh, and I think he, he he did he did most yeah. certainly like we all did. Yeah. So um, yeah, Liam's got to be uh, thought of when we think of all the people who. Help get this. Uh, help get this done. Yeah, yeah. Martin Dillagaff says John Hitchin was the announcer, and it means Tasha. Tasha nearly got wiped out by the ball, so that's why he said she nearly got wiped. Well, should have learned how to catch a ball. Tasha did an amazing job. If anybody wants to see somebody running around before the match, Tasha was the queen of all queens. She was amazing for that. Well done, sweetheart. You did a fantastic job. In fact, I don't think there was one person who didn't do a fantastic job on that day. Everybody did. Uh, I think uh, I love the comment in the page before the match. Who's going to have the first dump in the toilets? <laughs> well, yeah, it wasn't me. Uh, for me after all. Absolute, but... Absolutely fair class. I love the pies. I thought they were great. Um, yeah, the yeah, serve. Yeah. I'll give the full... I mean, like we said with the extra time staff, it was nice to have people that knew what they were doing. It weren't like a 16-year-old person that you get all the grounds that go. Um, and and that, that, oh, I, I saw him the first time. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, there was a lot. Of, and it just to me, to see everything that happened, it looked so, for me, I mean, I've been there for years, so I can't speak. But aside of what it was to what it was now, it looked so, so, so much more professional in as a unit, the stadium, the staff, the drinks, everything was so, so spot on and professional. 
that it wiped the floor with anything I've ever seen before. And that includes Dunvalley Stadium. That includes everything. The atmosphere, everybody got a concern with that. That was out of this. That was amazing out of that thing. I can't speak highly enough of everybody concerned with you. I mean, you, the fans, we met Courtney, Becca, all the people I sat around. You guys were amazing. A woman plumped a bloody big cowboy out on my head. I don't know. I thought it was cats. And she said, well, I haven't made that. So I just don't, I don't know, was it? Well, I'm not coming home. I'm not wearing a cap. Cowboy hats going around, weren't they? Oh, they um, were amazing. Everywhere. Yeah. I don't know where the cowboy, where's the cowboy hat thing come from? Or is it just a novelty? Because I think it's Kath Owen. West, we? I think <laughs> Kath Owen does it. She's the one that started it all out. I mean, she's, yeah. she's a famous one that started the drums in the 90s. Mm. Uh, and then everything. Good evening, Chris. Hope you are well, my man. Uh yeah. Good to see, see you Monday, Chris, for long time. You don't live around here now. It's good to have a good catch-up, mate. Uh, I've, one of the funniest things of the night, and not a lot of people saw this, but before this game starts and everything, and all the kids, Dodder, Hawks, and uh, Forgers, Forgers yeah, we're, all, we're, all, we're all mingling outside and all little kids. I love the Dodder uh, construction shirt. I thought that would look great. And the Forgers were walking down, and one of their kids shouts, Oh, look, it's the cheerleaders. We're going to smash you. And this is from an under-10s player or something like that. It dot of kid turned around and just shouted, bring it on, I'll crush you with me hands. And I'm like, this is under-10s. This is under-10s. Under and look intensity. at them, they're niggling already. So I, actually, like, I, love, I love the intensity. <laughs> it was fantastic to see all these kids going to go, I'm going to crush you. I'm going to break your skull. And mm. things like that. And, but so... Um, uh, I had my photograph took with the World Cup, but apparently this was sending all the photos to the club. So that, that. But uh, the face painter was amazing. Uh, all the glitter on people's faces and putting the eagle. That was fantastic. That was another, another well done for the club. Um, uh, I, I avoided that. I mean, I've, I've got a lot more skin available on my head now than I used to a few years back. Man. But I, uh, I resisted the temptation to have it done. But it did look great. Well done. That was another little, another nice little touch. Um, when I got there, Tash was like, um, there was a, an inflatable thing outside for the kiddies to play on. And she just says to me, we spent loads of money on that, and there's only adults playing with it. Uh, I didn't notice it, actually. <laughs> you know. oh. that. The, but, amount, um, the amount of times people yeah. were going, Sammy the Snake! And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. God, yeah, Phoenix it's, Knights again. <laughs> it's, a staple, it's a staple joke. <laughs> Not the other one in the van, do you want to see it? Oh, no, I'm brilliant. Uh, Andrew <laughs> Morris says, the LDRL team, I think, got the biggest cheer of the night, the smiles mm -hmm. on their faces. Only my criticism, that big lad that we kept dancing with the ball, he thought he was he thought he was Ellery Hanley at one bit. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> going, give him the rest of the ball, you hogger. Give him the ball. That was brilliant. Uh, are there plans for the scoreboard? The only thing lacking for me, a minor thing, though. Yep, apparently there is a scoreboard coming, but we don't know yet. Um, if you lose yeah, count, no, do what this I gentleman think, did. Just go on our I think, league. I think, we've got, I think we've got to have one. Um, I don't know what the plan is. I, I'm not yeah. in on that. But um, I think that, yeah, we will. I mean, it's not as bad as it used to be when we had the board at Don Valley and then it's <laughs> and we never got it fixed. And we had to have a little whatever the hell that thing yeah. was. I mean, everybody's got a phone. You can look at the score if you need. But, but yeah, I get what you're saying. We, we will get that done, but... At the moment, we're an infant who's starting to walk. We're not in yeah. the Olympic we're not, Games. We're not so. there yet. Uh, we're just, yeah, yeah. We've had one game. There is going to be TV problems. There is going to be things that go wrong. We just want to remember it's a work in progress. And that yeah. work is going to go, get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Uh, there will 100% be a fantastic scoreboard soon. I remember the scoreboard at Olin Stadium when it used to be a scaffolding. And this is no lie. They used to push it. It was on four set, a set of four wheels, and you had to take off the number and hook it back on. And there were two lads, rain, snow, blow, it didn't matter what the weather, there were two lads that would just stand there, and they used to wheel it thing, and then when they were able to try it, they used to go up and check and change the score, and that's what that was a Sheffield Eagle scoreboard. Superb in there. Yeah, well, a lot of clubs, Halifax especially, still have a one where they have a, a lad or a kid who um, changes the numbers by hand, so... I don't think when we've got some at the same wheels, I don't think anybody's in the right mind to criticise that, you know, yeah. you know, because 
I think a lot, of clubs, a lot of clubs don't have them. So we're yeah. not all like Lee and Featherstone. You know, even Halifax, big name there, they still do it by hand. So you know, yeah. uh, I think, um, I think. I mean, we're, we're going to go on about this for most at night. I know we are. Uh, announcement today that Joel Farrell and Mikey Wood have both been suspended for four games. It is what it is. We thought it'd be eight games for Mike. It got yeah. it got done down to a grade D on appeal. Yeah, it was it was an F, which is the worst. And eight matches a, plus, yeah. Yeah, and it was a landed punch. So yeah, um, but that got downgraded to a D, and also Super Joe was a D as well. Four games. We've got to take it up chin. We've got to move on. We've just got to. We've got to we can't do all about it. We've just got to deal with it. And this is this is the time. This is the time when we deal with it. Yeah. And by the way, his name is Super Joe. Look, there, you go. there you go. Look, it is Super Joe. That'll be worn at my next game. I'm not doing any more retros. The amount of people that wanted my lawless jersey, not happening. The amount of different jerseys would have great. I think I saw one from the Millennium yeah. season. We need to just mention this, don't we? The club said, bring out your old jerseys, and boy, everybody. <laughs> didn't lose, didn't lose the challenge. I saw just about every single one, including some that were never sold, and obviously were player jerseys. Yeah. There was the there was the rather bizarre blue and white hoop kit from 2016 that we had. That yeah. I don't think it was ever sold to the public. And nope. a fellow had one, and it was a player shirt. I very nearly asked if I could buy it. Yeah, um, Aston. They were Corey Aston's. They yeah. were Corey's, weren't it? So he had yeah. with that. But there were loads of out, and you could literally line everybody up from our history. Michael Stringer's a friend, uh, a fellow I know, friend of mine. Um, he actually told me that he was going to come in my least favorite kit ever. And then when when he got there, he showed it to me, and I'm like, get that monstrosity out of there. For those who don't know, it was the 2002 kit, the third one we had after we reformed. And it was, it was, I don't know who the company who made it was, Optimum Sports. They must oh, have been God, like, yeah. They must have been like in a clubhouse in a tree or somewhere. The shirt quality was quite naff. Oh. It was red and down to about green. here. And a then it was yellow. Little white, and then bright yellow all the way down. It's it no. Oh. It was horrible. And I've actually got one, funnily enough. It's signed by the team. I have, I will wear it one day. But um and, and Michael wore the away kit for that one, which were like blue and green, blue and green but the yeah. same colour. And they yeah. were just like, get that monstrosity away from me. But in all seriousness, what a collection of shirts we had. And on the telly, it looked incredible. So yeah. I was saying about Retro Shirts Day at, 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 at the Summer Bash, stuff that, do it all the time. Hey, do it all the time. First home game of every season, Retro Shirt Night. I think that'd be a great one. Or oh, first, just, the first. Well, tell you what, just do whatever you want. Do it, it, look, do it, do it all the atmosphere, it the atmosphere, and everything. I think everybody, Mark Hannigan, Mark Aston, Tash, the office, every person that built that up for weeks. Wednesday, everybody was last Wednesday. Look what a difference a week makes. Mm. This time last week, we got told that there was a limited capacity, and everybody was going mental. Well, me included. Everyone was going, how are we going to manage this? How's this going to go? And then you look what happened on Monday. And we are still buzzing right now, yeah. right? And I can't wait for, I can't wait to go to another game. I'm looking at my pennies. I'm looking and saying, I wonder if I can get a train up there, another one for 13 quid return. <laughs> I'm looking at every opportunity I can. But I know for the fact, my next game I'm doing is either going to be Summer Bash or it's London. But I'm hoping definitely London. And I'm London London's first and Summer Bash is end of July. Yeah, so I'm hoping as to see if I can do both. About, as we spoke about London, it's, it's easier now. I know yeah. they've announced train strikes today, but, you know, that, that'll, they'll, they'll not that all happen because they, they can't. So, um, yeah, London is obviously a doer. Summer Bash is in Leeds. That'll be easy, nice and easy for you, or should be. I think... Andrew just said in the chat room, can we get Miss Anagan to get some of the white shirts or polo shirts as merch as they're really nice? I think the best thing to do with them, Andrew, is leave them as staff because if the people are wearing them on the match days of the white polo shirts and everything, then at least we know the staff. And I think they sh there's some things in this world that should stay as staff. And I think the white shirts and the polo shirts with the Eagles, I think let's just leave them to the staff. Don't sell everything. I think yeah. the, the white polo shirts should be the people that then we know that 
their staff on the day. So otherwise, we can't tell the difference, really. Yeah. If you really want one, I expect the club will probably have a few spare for the staff. Just email them at the end of the season and ask if they've got any. And I'm sure Mr. Aston will, um, will uh, <laughs> tell you one. You know, he's, they, they, you know uh, the club don't... I don't I don't know about now, but the club didn't used to keep a lot of club stuff. They'd just sell it off in us and cheap. Uh, I know they were them brilliant great polos for Wembley that no one ever wanted to sell because they were that oh. good. But the club didn't sell them. The club never sold them. No. Nah. They would have sold loads of those. But things yeah. like that, if there's any spares at end of year, you know, I'm sure Tuggy yeah. will relieve you of some of your hard earned for it. Yeah, good to, good to the player of the year, do I think that we might get a stall up or something like that and get all end of season stock, get rid of it that night. I think that'd be great. Hey, that's a good idea. Get rid of get a table up at the end of season, do If Tasha's still listening, there's an official pitch. Sell off, sell off all the jobs you don't need. Yeah, I'm sure me and Dean will happily buy some of it, you know. But so, as, as, as Michael just said then, you know, there's p- things that people want and if you don't need it anymore at the end of the year, then sell it, you know. It's all money. Yeah. And uh, we can officially announce we've got a world exclusive. Oh, God. Eagles chat now has changed player sponsors. Oh, right, well, yeah, okay, I know about this. Due <laughs> to the unfortunate departure of Mr. Liam Johnson, uh, we had a chat, I had a chat with Mark Mark Hannigan last week about this and said, and he said, very simply, uh, you can do it. He said, we, we can have the, you gave us a choice of players, and we feel it should be our homegrown player. And it feels like the lad that came from the academy, the reserves, he went away, he's come back. I think we now are the official player sponsor, away shirt of Kadeem Williams. These are us. So we can guess who we're going to try and get on the show or some bit. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, travel mugs for work. So can... Then, uh, then uh, yeah, we uh, we may have another guest coming on the show soon. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but um, uh, we may have another former player of the yeah. grand final winning era who might be coming on the show soon. Yeah, um, makes good relish. Makes very excellent relish. <laughs> he's uh, he uh, he's he's the most uh, Scottish Australian or Australian Scottish you'll ever meet. I'm yeah. sure I've given it away now, but um, if um, I've been in touch and he's responded favourably, uh, so we'll hopefully try and get him on the show soon. It will be great to speak to him. Yeah, um, and also the fact that uh, he... Uh, I wonder what he thought watching QLT on Monday because he's head of uh, rugby at Keithley, isn't he, now? Oh, so, yes, he is, yeah. So I wonder what he thought of watching QLT on Monday. Go in. Oh, I think we'll have to call him back. <laughs> Please don't, don't. Please don't. don't. You're winning. Don't, You're top please. of the table. No, 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 no. Don't, we won't. Don't, don't call him back, please. I think QLT was very shocked on Monday because when the match was finished, he had this big, massive, beaming smile, didn't he, when he was walking down and we were all going, Q, 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 Q. Um, I can't, I mean, I'm going to be on, completely honest. I didn't sleep Monday night. I went back to my hotel room and I had a can of like, energy drink and I was buzzing for the whole night. What are you doing? Excuse my French. Having a can of it. It was half a can left. It was half a can left, and I had it, and I was buzzing. I was buzzing that much. I watched one of the early episodes of Bullseye on Challenge TV in the hotel room at five o'clock in the morning. So I finally got to sleep about two o'clock, about half past twelve, when I was on my train going home. That's the only time I slept, and then I slept last night as well. So I was buzzing, and then I messaged him this morning, and I went. Can't wait a week. We can't wait till next yeah. week. No, yeah. I can't do it. We can't do it. So, so we were surprised tonight. Um, it was great as well to see so many of our older players back at uh, back at OLP oh. on, uh, on Monday for it. I spoke to Missy was there. I spoke to Greg. Uh, Greg Burns. Corey Aston was there. Said hello to him. Um, there were quite a few came down who might live locally or whatever. I don't know. Um, but uh, it was great to see them come back and uh, and see what it's all about and you never know might might make the way back here one day uh, Eddie, said, 40 Eddie. years old still tearing it up what an yeah. absolute living legend he is yeah Eddie Batty as well I mean Eddie, Eddie Batty Eddie had Eddie. the audacity to turn down Katie Pete must be the first well, male ever years. must be the first male in the history of the world that turned down Katie ever oh my god oh my god and I mean that in the nicest way in this way term possible um, but I think over and all, I mean, the floodlights look great when the light, when the well, the lights in the stand lit up. Oh my god, uh, 
Martin Brooks said he loved it as well because he was there, Martin. It it just looked great. Who watched it on free sports? I mean, who actually watched it last night? Because I did. I've got it recorded, so I'm going to watch it forever. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, sorry, I didn't get to see you on Monday, Martin. I, I couldn't find no, you. I, I don't didn't. know where you were. But, um, yeah, I, 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 sorry, I, I'm not, I wasn't being ignorant. I tried to speak to everybody who I, um, who I know. But um, we'll, we'll catch up soon, Martin. I know you've yeah. not been able to get, and it's wonderful to see you back and to see you, that you are on the mend. And uh, we send our best to you, as we always have. And, you know, ring me anytime if you want to talk. There's always, there's always some fat to chew, isn't there? Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, I've never, I mean, we've been to so many games and the, 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 everybody's complained that you'll never get an atmosphere at Sheffield Eagles. That has just been blown out of the sky. Surely, every, I mean, even everybody on Premier Sports heard it. Everything we looked about it, it looked fantastic. And then if anybody's wondering where the flag is, it's gonna. It's been given to Katie, and I've got. I made a promise that you'll be there at every home game from now on. I can't be there at every home game, so the flag will be. So, okay, I gave it to Katie, and she's promised me that if the flag, if she's not there, she'll give it to somebody. But every home game, it will have that flag that says "Welcome Home, Sheffield Eagles," and that's it. You couldn't miss it, could you? On everything, every time you look, it was just this big, massive flag in the middle of the stand. I'm it's going on the telly a bit, yeah, yeah. I'm, you just, just see my ball patch over the top of it. Yeah. yeah the you, person you that made out. the person yeah. that made the flag, he sent me a message and he just says, I watched the game. He says, You don't know how wonderful I saw when I kept he says, every time I'm looking, I'm going, There's the flag, that's the flag I made. And he's getting his <laughs> wife and he's going, Look, I made that flag. No, there she went. And then the end of the night, she's going to him, Yes, I know you made that flag. Stop telling me, will you? Stop telling me. But he says, that flag, every time you looked at it, it was on TV. He said, it looked amazing. I said, well, you did it. Thank you so much. I am having a new one made, but this one's going to say Eagles chat on it. And we're going to, I'm going to make sure that it's all over this room. But uh, I will have one, a new one made anyway. So, uh, and if anybody wants a new flag made, let me know. I'll get in contact with the gentleman that makes them. He, he can, he'll do any design you wish, as long as it's no swearing or anything like that. It was fantastic. Uh, it was absolutely brilliant the whole night. Um, I'll be right back. Carry on. I'll just be right back. And I mean, and oh, excuse me, I'll take. I think, and also the kindness that was shown towards me, I'm blown away. All the people that said they love the show, um, they loved all the interviews, they love the fact that we've got this great format now. Um, and I really did, I was, I was very, very emotional. At times when some when I when complete strangers come up and went, hey Dino, love your Eagles chat. We love it to bits. And that means the world. Um, we started I started doing this six, seven years ago now. I think it was 2016 I started doing this. And uh Ooh. the first ever episode was me wearing a Star Wars t-shirt and a beanie hat, and had not one bit of Eagles merchandise on me. And then that changed it and everything. And I remember one episode wearing a Bradford Bulls jersey because I was in support because they were in administration. That episode's been deleted because no way will I ever be. No, after what they pulled and everything like that since, I'll never I wear a Bradford. You put it in the bin, didn't you? Hey? I remember oh, you I'd... put it in the bin, didn't you, that shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put, yeah I, I... Did it Did it like that comment I made? Uh, their Twitter and uh, told me off. I made a comment when, when Bradford were in administration just before they went bust. Uh, you were wearing a Bradford shirt on the show. And I think I commented something to the effect of that shirt's worth more than the club it represents. And, oh, yeah. that, uh, that'll upset a few people, but I have no regrets. No. Um, we've also got to give a mention to the gentleman from Widness on Twitter. Who decided to say you've only beat our worst ever Widness team? If I have... Um, oh, look, there's a towel here. Do you want to cry on it? Well, there's, there's many, walkers make many different types of flavours of crisps and he had to pick salty, <laughs> didn't he? Yeah, just got beef and onion there, you know. We've also got a go special, mate. we keep mentioning all these people, but we've got to mention the media lads, Alex, Lois, Dan, who did a wonderful job of everything to do with social media, the whole thing. It was just spot on for a lot of them. Uh, a lot of tears shed in the library afterwards. Uh, there was a that was a great night in there. If you don't, if you ever want to go in after the match, please, I recommend that place. It was great when Tubby came in, the place exploded, and he was 
B was bouncing off them. He could have he could have bounced off them walls for about eight nine hours. Yeah, I mean, to be to be came in and he was talking to all the folk who uh, are involved with the club, like directors, sponsors, whatnot. That's fine. Uh, me and you sort of, I, I don't approach him overly. If he wants to talk to me, you know, no, we'll yeah. say over that. But I don't, I don't approach people when they're busy. Um, no. And uh, uh, we, we were getting ready to go, and Tubby's like, "Girl, oh, come here! You're not going without talking yeah. to me." Sort of thing. So <laughs> it was. Um, I do recommend. Obviously, there's not much in the way of pubs nearby. I mean, the Liverpool club's gone. You know, all the other stuff like Farrah's has long gone and cocked out. So the library is what we've got now. Obviously, drink at the ground because they get your money. But yeah. if uh, if you want. The library's there. It's good. You know, they've sorted out the issues they had before when they were short of stuff, but it's all good now. It's all been sorted. Yeah, um, yeah because we've got, an, I don't think there's any kind of agreement officially the- anything with them, but we, we, we should show our support for them because they've been, they weren't even sure if they needed to open before the game on Monday. Yeah. And I'm happy to say that it was very busy in there before the game Monday. So, <laughs> so we should support them for sticking by yeah. us. Yeah. Um, I just want to say about the media guys. Obviously, we had Dan on last week. He was a great chat. Um, I know Lewis and Alex as well. The eagle eye stuff that we do from behind the sticks, and you know, without all the editing, I think that is some of the best content we've ever had on our social channels. Yeah. You know, it's just a complete fan's eye view of the game, and you can see and hear everything. It's almost as if you're there. I absolutely love it. And whoever came up with that, you deserve a prize because it's a great idea, and I absolutely. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Andrew Morris says we need to persuade the library to open after the game, as they're only open two days a week. But from my recollection, I was in there after the game, and so was a lot of other people in there after the game. So uh, I think well, I don't, I don't know the opening hours, granted, but I would think that if there's an Eagles game, well, I think they will open for yeah. us because there yeah. is custom right there. So yeah, they surely they will. Yeah. yeah. I think the most random person we talked to, I think we have to we talked to Tubby, was the gentleman from GRI Group. Oh, Mr. Royal, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, 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 good, he's good, actually, yeah. He's, um, uh, he, he, yeah, he, he talks to the fans, you know, if you go a lot. I mean, he's been a big, he's been a big supporter of the club as well as being did, a sponsor. Did you it's, hear what he um, said? Did you hear what he said to us? We went to their board and we said, oh, and Tubby says, oh, these guys do Eagles chat. And he went... Why aren't you wearing my stuff on your chat show? Why isn't there no mention of my team? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I will address you going? Them. Yeah, and I'm like, there you go. There you go, look, GRI group. And I'm there like, think, yeah, there we go. We've got it both. <laughs> We've got it there both. On now. And I did, I did say, I did say you're welcome on the show any time. And he said, yeah. I'll have to work. I might do. But um, yeah. I do remember, I do, I do yeah, he's, uh, he's him and uh, David Kearns as well, who oh. works with him at GRI. He's always approachable. He's always... Spoke to me. I saw, actually saw Mr. Kearns in France uh, in Toulouse years ago. We got talking. Yeah. So him and I think he's a friend of Ian Swires as well. So these are long term fans and friends of the club who've been sponsors. And these are the people that we need, you know, now with the regrowing phase. The sponsors have backed us all the way through not having a home and being nomads and high expense of renting grounds. And we can only say thank you for sticking so with we're... the club. And now is the time when we can repay that faith to them by having his own corporate section at the new ground and being able to entertain your guests and such. Because corporate, when we were at Don Valley, corporate was a massive part of our uh, of our income. And we've not been able to capitalise on that as much as we had before. Yeah. So now's the time to strike with that. Yeah. Um, other thing about Monday, I remember, is when the final whistle went and it showed you Tubby walking down the set, he had a face like thunder. And because you look at him going, oh, they conceded two late tries, didn't they? He ain't happy. Look, look at that. And he was walking down and he's like, not happy at all here. And I'm like, we've just it's won, but he's already cool. going. Look Tubby's a perfectionist, isn't he? Which is yeah. not a criticism. It's just how he is. But of course, yeah. But I thought Tubby spoke brilliantly after the yep. game. Um, I've seen his, I've seen his interview on Premier Sports with uh, with Hendo and Kevin and the lady whose name I can't yeah. remember. Emma, isn't it the host? And um, he spoke brilliantly. And you can tell, even after a game when the emotions are high, and I mean, Tubby's emotions are high all the time, but I mean, especially after a game when we'd won and such an event, I thought he spoke brilliantly about everything. Us, the fans, the team, and the setup, and the staff. He, he, he really, really did come across so well. And um, that's what it means. That's what it means to everybody. You know, there are some, there, imagine being a, a football fan 
and hating the manager of your team. And being Wednesday fans, we've had this scenario, haven't we, quite a yeah. lot? Yeah, but, just a bit. Yeah. Uh, you actually, imagine, you know, Wednesday having a manager like that, you know. Teams could, sports could learn a lot from people like him. Yeah, I think when, when and if and when that day does come, when Toby says, I'm going to retire, um, whoever takes over is going to have to have about seven or eight different hats because the job that Toby does, it's not worth for one man. It's six, seven, eight, because I've never known anything. I think every, I think the only person who didn't get interviewed from the office on Premier Sports was our friend Tash, because Mark Hannigan was on the TV and so was Toby. <laughs> Where was, I think, I think Tash was running around like crazy on Monday. She was great. Considering that's her first, pro- I think I think that's the first home match she's ever done when she's been in charge of the office and all that. She did an amazing job. She was so professional and everything what she did, everything. Um, we've got to talk about him. We've got to talk because every there was such a build up to it. Nobody knew what he looked like. Nobody knew what he was going to be. And then at seven o'clock, I said goodbye. I waved. I said goodbye, and Errol appeared. And it's an eagle. Can't knock it. It looks great. I think it, I looks, think it looks fantastic. An it's an absolute eagle, isn't it? I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't saying I know, you know, what you know what you expect. I wasn't thinking about it too much. But then when he came out, and obviously I know he was in it, but he actually looks like a proper eagle. It's not like one of these you see some mascots that are just horrible. <laughs> and this has been brilliantly done. And, uh, right. and do you see how popular it were with young guns when it was going around? Oh, God, yeah. You know, He's... You know, wanted a piece of it. So... I had, I must have had my photo took about 10, 11 times with kids. They loved it. And I'm like, and they kind of went, hold on, something's never changed here. And just kids just come up and went, can we have a photograph? Yeah, come on, help yourself. Come on, let's do it. So yeah. kids, a mascot, you put a mascot in there, kids will love it forever. And it's something yeah. that they'll always remember. And I'm like, oh, I've got a photograph with mascot. And it's... To the lad that's doing it, God bless you, my man. Um, I officially now done. That's me. I'm. I, I walked away. I'll be straight. Yes, I did have a shed a tear when I was in when the room when I was taking it off. I did did little do a bit of a tear because I knew it was the last time I was taking everything off. And I and I put it in the bag. And I must admit, I was doing everything I could to put it in the bag and make sure everything was nice. And uh, I came out and I had my gear on and everything. And I thought. That's it. It's no, it's no longer Freddie Mate, Freddie Eagle anymore. It's Errol. God bless him and all that's and all that does him. I mean, amazing, amazing costume. Amazing to get in it. Uh Lycra. That's a new, that's a new uh, material for the mascot outfit. But uh fantastic to see it. Fantastic to everything to do with it. It was amazing. Um, and uh Errol, here's to many more years of your pal. You're doing a cracking job, you'll be amazing. Uh, I think best one I heard he goes, I said, have you heard about the rules for being a mascot? And he went, oh, yeah, I've read the RFL rule book for mascots. And I went, what? There's an RFL rule book for there mascots. There is an art, and I'm going to search for this, and I'm going to find it. There is a guidebook for mascots by the RFL. <laughs> I went, are you wow. serious? And he went, yeah, and even Tash said it. Yes, there is a guidebook for mascots with the RFL. Talking of which, did you see the almighty cock up by the RFL at the weekend that they oh, were giving away? They're well known for him with the code good 100. Did anybody see oh, this? Oh, well, mm. well, briefly touch on this before we before we wind up. Um, a code got out there that was apparently only supposed to be used by certain folk, medical staff, hospital people, whoever I don't know the, the, the full. But apparently got into the public domain and people were getting free tickets. Now, the RFL have turned around and said, well, anybody that did a ticket through that who's not entitled to one will have the ticket cancelled. I think they may have a legal issue with that because did they advertise it was for NHS staff or whatever it was? It was a code that was out there in the public domain and it wasn't restricted. You didn't have to enter any proof and it wasn't said, you know, it wasn't said this is a so I, I think I think I think they may have a legal problem. Yeah, I got I, I did it on Sunday because I went. I wonder what I can get, and I went straight in and I clicked on two tickets nearest to the front I could get, and they were fifty five pounds each. 
And I went in and he went, go to checkout. And the checkout was there. And he said, put in the code. And then he just said, and I put in the code what it was. And then all of a sudden, I think I showed you the the, uh, the screenshot. Yeah. Because it went, and it went, checkout minus £110 for two free tickets for the Challenge Cup final. And all I had to do was press checkout. And I go, but I couldn't go. I couldn't, I couldn't go because there was no chance of me doing this Saturday. But it was so easy. And then half an hour later, oh, there's been an almighty glitch. Uh, you're not allowed to do it. You're going to have your ticket stopped. And there were people who in half an hour, now this has really, really got my goal. <laughs> right? They said, oh, I've got the tickets and I've booked my travel down and I've booked my hotel all in half yeah. an hour. They yeah. spent all this money and I went, and uh, I'm not saying where they come from, but it's one of the two finalists and it ain't the one from Lancashire, let's just say. And um, I said, uh, I was like, well, hold on. It, 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 they were just pandemonium. But then the same name kept coming up in it. Sack him. Sack Rimmer. <laughs> it's another one again. I'm like, I'm not saying a word to, here. I don't want to get into too much of an ugly, uh, you know, slinging contest about this, but I think no. the RFL... I, th- I personally think the RFL might have to one of those tickets. They've the other so. thing is, the other thing is, um, it just shows you that sales are obviously not going that well, are they? No, no, they're not but at 55, all. 55, Fifty-five quid in the current climate to travel all the way to London for a game of rugby. I'm not. I know it's the cup final, and I know when. And well, it's leaving at Wembley. It's top in a minute, but I know they've got to pay a rental. But I think fifty-five quid's a lot of money. Yeah, I think that's the issue. I think it's affordability. I think people want to go. But I think it's just a lot of money for some folk. And there's probably, fans of, there's probably fans of the finalists who aren't going for that very reason. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. I think, um, I know everybody said about when we took about eight 9,000 down for our cup final in 98, and then we took less than 1,500 to the 1895, if I'm, if I'm got my facts right. I know I haven't, but I'm just guessing there were 1,500 or something like that I went. But... Um, It'd be interesting to see how many down come down from Yorkshire and then Lancashire. I mean, Wigan will take down the Lords. They always oh, they do. They'll, they'll do there, oh. and They always do. It's Wigan they always it. will. So it'd be interesting to see how many uh, of the other lot that go down. You, Everybody knows who I'm on about. Uh, but they, uh, Andrew Morris has just said, have a look on Total RL and you will see the threads about it. But they have realised that the ground is all self-scan. So they can't confront the tickets because all they've got to do is scan the tickets. Onto the thing, oh, so they can they can program they can program the turnstile to reject them, but is anybody really going to go to all that trouble? Uh, I mean, wh- when we was there in ni- in 2019, and they had the whole top off top top thing of Wembley blocked off, uh, they said because they couldn't sell f- the tickets for the final, and the whole of uh, the top of Wembley was uh, covered with all the badges of all the uh, the teams in rugby. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what happened here? Can't we sell out Wembley anymore? Has this game gone to so bad that we can't sell out Wembley? I think there's many, I think there's many factors. I hope I'm wrong when I say that the Challenge Cup might be losing its edge a little bit because the finalists mm. tend to come from a pot of about six teams, um, and even even the even a couple of Saints fans we spoke to at Wembley in 2019 said it's getting an expensive do doing this every year because we've got this grand final, uh, which is a spend, and I said, well, that's an embarrassment to riches, and he went, yeah, but it's all money and it's not you don't grow on trees, so to speak, mm. so. Yeah, I'm not saying we shouldn't have it at Wembley. I'm not saying we shouldn't have it in London. What I'm saying is the RFL needs to look at how they do it. They yeah. need to have better ticket deals. It needs to be... I think one of the other problems is the semi-finals are too close to the final. And it doesn't give people a chance to sort the money or plan it or do it in the way they want. In you know, you that... can't plan on if your team might get there. Um, yeah. Because it... what, what Saints have thought at the start of the yeah. year, oh, we're definitely going to be at Wembley. Let's book everything. And now they're not there. I, yeah, I but... think... I think the semi-finals are too close to the final yeah. in the same month, effectively, because the semis were at the start of May and the finals at the end of May. People might not get paid in that gap, yeah. so it's an expense, and it's it's no, that's my that's just my two pen. Yeah. In my, in ninety eight, we had the semi-final last week in March, and then the final was May the second. We had about six weeks. There were yeah. six weeks um, between the semi and the final. Well, when we had when we had the eighteen ninety five final, I'm sure we had a clean month to organise that, didn't we? Yeah, something like yeah. that. But this how it felt, isn't it? This were that, this were less, and yeah. because we've had to move the cup final to earlier in the year because some 
football didn't book Wembley. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've just had a quick look at the fixtures next week uh, on the 2nd of June. Relegation decider, this one. Workington versus London, half past 12 kickoff. Well, if Workington don't win that one, they'll never they'll never win a game uh, because London at the moment are in a bad place and the free form, the co- coach is just gone. Yeah. So, and assistant coach, who's his brother, will have gone and somebody else will have gone. So, they're Two in a mess. Words. Two yeah. words, John, John Keir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> could, could, they, could they afford him? I mean, he's well, the they, ideal. They said full time. They said they're going to, oh, they're going to hire a full time coach. They but is John, they're... is John going to move down there? Is it, respectfully? Uh, I'm not saying he's old, but is he going to is he going to want to move down there at this age to do that? I'm not. I'm not That's, sure. Yeah. I'm not sure it's for him. Yeah. Um, I think he wants to do it, but I think I think not at the minute, no. Yeah. If anybody's got any NRL ambitions for the next few days, tomorrow morning at 10 to 10, 10 to 11, it's Melbourne Storm versus Manly. Uh, Friday, Penrith are playing Broncos at 9 o'clock. In the, uh, Penrith are playing Queensland Cowboys at 9, 9 a.m. And on at 10.55, it's Brisbane Broncos versus Gold Coast Titans. And then at night, you've got London Scholars versus Oldham. On Saturday, we've got, in the NRL, New Zealand Warriors versus Newcastle Knights at 6 a.m. South Sydney Rabbit O's free fall versus the West Tigers at half past eight. That'll be a humdinger. I hope the Tigers turn them over. Sharks versus Sydney Roosters at 10.35. Uh, you've got the Challenge Cup final between that team from West Yorkshire and Wigan. And at 12, eight, at 12 midday, it's the 1895 Cup final. Featherson v Lee. Who you got? I've got Fev. I think it's Fev. Yeah. Uh, apparently, everybody was singing the plays as a Blake Ferguson and against the other week, but I went, yeah, but he was playing He scored four, tries against, he scored four tries against Whitehaven. Uh, me yeah. and you on a good day could score four tries against Whitehaven. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad showing. I'm just saying it was a nice game for him to start in. This is going to be rather different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and on Tuesday, uh, oh, Tuesday evening, Halifax played Jewsbury. Next you think Tuesday. Fax, you, you, you think Fax form they're in should, uh, should do that. Yeah. Although, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Garside got a one-match ban for his um, tomfoolery against us the other week, so... Yeah, and uh, I'd be interested to see uh, both Challenge Cup finals and 1895 are on the BBC. And Chris says London appointing a full time coach. Yeah, apparently a part time coach from London Scholars didn't do the job right for the uh, Broncos. Well, I wonder why. I'm sorry, but Broncos are in free fall and there's no hope of saving these now. I really don't think so. I hope I'm wrong. We need a London. We need a London presence. We need a London thing in rugby league. And we need London either in the Championship or the Super League. We don't need two teams in the div- bottom division. We don't. If that happens, they'll merge. They'll merge together. They really will. I think that'll happen. I think the Scholars will go into the conference and the Broncos will stay in the on and the Scholars will be a feeder team like they used to be. That's my no, feeling. You may be correct. I think that's it's a, it's a, sh- it's, a, it's, a, it's a sad state of affairs for them anyway. But uh, anyway, I think it's about time we got out of here because this has been... Oh, one hell of a buzz over the last few days mm. to to Mark, to the Marks, <laughs> to Mark Hannigan, to Mark Aston, to Tasha, to Zach, to everyone who I met on Monday evening, whether it was just saying hi or just saying we love the show or anything like that. Me personally, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for one of the greatest nights of my life. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And Katie's just joined us. Katie's just said, yeah, food and drink were expensive. Not going to lie. Hope it can be a bit cheaper. It was like London prices. She's always got some more of that summer, and she? She's always got some more. <laughs> we love you, Kate. We love you. Yeah. yeah. Have you got anything to say to finish off, my man? Uh, I think we've had a great show tonight. And again, thank you. There were loads of people I saw on Monday. Uh, old people from the club. Uh, people who used to watch it on Valley, but it's not been able to come in recent years. And everyone said hello. It was great to see you all. I hope we keep seeing you. And again, for those folk who asked how I am, uh, thanks so much. It's it's great that you're thinking like that. Um, so I hope we can see you all again going forward. You know, club, as I said, I think I pitched this on the last show we did. Let's see if we can do 
I mean, I say you can get a season ticket because obviously we've only played two home games. There's still plenty left. But later in the year, when we have got the capacity sorted out, let's see if we can do a five, six game deal, get people in, and then more encouragement for next year. Because the mo- I think we're I think we're going to hit once we get these bands out of the way, people back from injuries. Um, I think we're going to hit some good form, especially with all the home games we've got coming up. Now is the time we need to we need to get back in them. You know. We're at home now. We're back in Sheffield. It's it's easy to get to. Let's see if we can get the more people in, the better. You know, that's where we need to go. Let's just get bums on seats. And we can say that now. We've got seats for people to sit in. Um, the yeah. other day, on Monday, when we had to... I had to go for... Um, uh, when I got... Went, sorry, at the, at the start of the game, when I had the flag thing, I had to come back. We were just starting to kick off, and I had to get back to my seat, which was, like, in the middle of a row. And uh, I had to go past some people... And you could just see the looks on people's faces like, we haven't had to do this in ages. You know, moving, moving <laughs> what, what are we doing this for? What are we doing this for? Yeah. But um, having 800 people in there is going to be a lot better than having 800 people in Keepo. What an atmosphere we made in that stand. Yeah. And we need to keep doing that. It was amazing. Yeah. The taxi army, everybody. Uh, we've just got a few more comments and then finish. Katie says, I loved every minute of Monday, every minute. Thanks for the flag, Dino. My pleasure. Keep that flying. Courtney Thanks for, Jane. Nicking, Thanks for nicking me rucksack, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was superb. <laughs> she gave it me back. It's all fine. <clears throat> that was genius. Uh, yeah. he, had his, he had his photograph took with the World Cups and everything and turned around and Katie just went, all right, let's go in. And she just picked this bag up and she walked off. And then he come to, Mark come towards me and he goes, where's my bag? And I went, oh, Katie's got it near. And he went, hey, Katie. And she went, oh my God, what am I doing with this? And it went, <laughs> <laughs> I have to have my name up back. I have to put the initials on. <sighs> oh, it was, it was genius. And there were some of these moments that will never be beaten. Um mm. Courtney says it's better than I ever could imagine on Monday. Katie says promising to see all the RL Rugby players and all getting involved. It's a rebirth. It's going to be a long process. It's going to be hard. But what a starting ground we've got because everybody that was there will be saying the same thing as what I'm going to say and Mark knows what I'm going to say. I can't wait for next week. That's the best thing of the lot. A lot of people was there and they're all going, we can't wait for next week to come back. And when you've got that feeling inside, oh, my God, is that, no matter what it is, we've got a stadium. And, yeah, it may not be right. It may not be right at the moment. But, wow, what a starting block we've got. What a starting block we've got now. Amazing. I can't meet only people that came away from unhappy had witness jerseys on. That was the only type of people that had it on. Everybody and else. Got, and, then, and then they've got to go on to witness. So, you know, what a, what a, what a, what a, what a night. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we're going to get out of here. Thank you very much for the, all the wonderful support you showed us. Thanks for all the comments and everything you said to us on the Monday night. It was amazing. And we will be back next Monday uh, chatting about the next week's events. But like we said, the big news today, Joel and Mikey get banned for four games. So it's not the eight games we were fearing for Mikey. So we can get we can get rid of the two other games in four days next week. I was going to say, Dino, you know, I can't do Monday next week. Um, should we just sort out a day? Because a lot of people, some people have said to me, your show's not consistent. Well, no, it isn't because uh, Dino works shifts. Um, I work, but obviously I've got clad up. Yeah. And also um, when we have guests, we do Monday. this when the guests do. So that's why it's inconsistent. And that's why we record them and then stick them on YouTube so you can join them in one. Yeah. But I know for a fact I can't do next Monday, Dino. But I don't we'll, know we'll what but then obviously we've got we've got a uh, Jubilee Thursday where we're playing. Yeah, uh, so. that's next weekend. We've got Jubilee Thursday. We've got Friday a bank holiday, and then we've got blah, blah, blah. so oh, there's Tuesday, then, Wednesday. Then away that weekend, so we'll we'll sort something out. Yeah, but, we'll um, sort some. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Or you, just, or you could just do it with Art, man. I don't think that people will complain about that. So. No, yeah, they will. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. anyway, okay. See you later, guys. Love the shows. I'll watch this later. I was late today. No worries, Katie. You take care, sweetheart. No. Thanks to everybody. Eagles are home. That's all I'm going to say. We're home. And match worn Wembley jersey. Thank you. But it was worn by the mascot. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, I finally got a white one. I finally got one. Anyway, mate, you take care of yourself. Love to the family and everything. And we'll see you next week. And uh, 
everybody. I'll see you next week for another edition of Eagles Chat. Take care, guys. Good night. God bless. Bye-bye.